This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, your home for IT training products. Hello, you're watching the video IP addresses binary numbers. In this video, we're going to focus in on binary numbers and explain why these are important in TCP IP. Now, you may or may not be familiar with what a binary number is, but basically, binary numbers are what computers use in order to process data, okay, kind of computer speak, uh, rather than the decimal numbers that we're used to. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need to do is differentiate between what a binary number is and a decimal number. Now, binary, if you've seen this before, is all zeros and ones like you see right here. Okay, so we're going to spend some time talking about what a bit is and also what a byte is, bits and bytes. Okay, a decimal number, well, that's the numbers we're used to seeing every day, 0, 1, 3, 4, 117, whatever that number might be. Okay, first off, let's talk about a bit. A bit is the smallest unit of information when we're dealing with computing, okay? And that number can either be a zero or a one, like we see right here, okay? So you don't really ever come across this. You're not dealing in zeros and ones. So we'll talk about when you'll see these and uh, why these are important to us here in a second. Okay, now this zero or one comes into play with binaries. Zero is off and one is on, okay? And you'll see why this is important to us here in a second. Secondly, when it comes to bytes, basically one bit, okay, is the smallest unit of information like we set up here in our third bullet point. And then down here, eight bits equals one byte, okay? So just some general facts that you need to be aware of. Now let's talk about how decimal numbers look in comparison to what a binary number looks like, okay? Right here, I'm going to circle this, we've got a decimal number on the left-hand side, 192, and its binary equivalent is one one followed by six zeros. Okay, so drastically looking, uh, different looking numbers. And when it comes time for us to enter in IP addresses, remember we enter in IP addresses that look something like this, 192.168.200.77, or whatever your IP address might be. Now, this is not what the computer sees, however. They see binary representations, okay? And really, these numbers here are just for our purposes, human purposes, so it's much easier to enter in these IP addresses than it is um, instead of entering all these binary numbers, okay? Think about this. Instead of entering in 192, what if you had to remember the IP address 11000000? Now there's a binary number for 168, so that would go here, eight more bits, dot. Then there's a binary number for 200, so eight more bits, dot, and then finally 77. Okay, and we'll take a look at how that converts out uh, here in a second. All right, so basically to sum all this up here, decimal numbers are what we deal with as humans. They're easier to read. We recognize these numbers. They're what we use every day. Binary numbers are what computers deal with. And anytime you're entering in a decimal number, it's really being converted down to a binary number when we're dealing with IP addresses. Okay, let's take a look at something here. When it comes time to convert these numbers, for the most part, you won't really have to worry about it, but there will be some troubleshooting issues. And especially if you get more into routing in Cisco, um, you need to be able to really have a better clue and better idea of how to translate decimal numbers down into binary numbers. Okay, now these bit values here basically represent the different placeholders in the number above. Okay, so this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then finally the eighth. Okay, so for example, when we're dealing with this number here, 192, when you're calculating out the binary number for it, you can either have zero or one, okay? Remember, on, on or off. Okay, so if we wanted to come up with a binary number for 192, do we need 128? Okay, do we need to add in 128 to make that number? Yes, we do, so that's going to be on. Do we need 64? 128 plus 64 actually equals 192, so that would be on as well. Now, if you look here, now we've equaled 128 plus 64 because this number is on and this number is on. We don't need any of these other placeholders for the binary numbers on, so the rest of these are going to be off. 
Okay, now this may be a little bit confusing for you as our first example. We're going to go through several different examples to try to give you a better feeling of how this works. Okay, now before we do that, let's take a, a look at this IP address as a whole and see how it's divided up. Over here on the left, we have bits, decimal, this is just indicating that this is a decimal number, and then bytes. So if we were to take just one of these octets, 192, how many bits does it take to make up that, that octet, that decimal number? It takes eight. Okay? Each one of these then, each one of these different octets consists of eight bits. It takes eight bits to make up that number. Okay? And that's what we're dealing with up here. Each one of these then is a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we turn these on or off to come up with that decimal number. Down below here, we see that each one of these octets is also one byte. Remember, 8 bits equals one byte, as we showed up here above. Okay, so this isn't so important to us, but just from a um, theoretical standpoint, it's nice to know that, you know, each one of these octets here is equal to one byte of information. Okay, so if we add up all of these, we have 32 bits total that make up the IP address, or in other words, four bytes. Okay, let's take a look at our next piece of information here. And what we're dealing with here is really just some binary conversion examples. So we're going to take three different numbers and then kind of put all these together in the end here and show you how this works. So in this case, what we're doing is we're starting off with the number 121. And what I'd like to do is convert this to a binary number. Okay, so here are our bit values up here above, 1 through 128. And these represent the placeholders for each of our eight different bits. Okay, so when it comes for each one of these, when it comes time to calculate, we need to either be 0 or 1. Okay, off or on. Now, it's real simple to do this once you get the hang of it, but it's, it's a, essentially calculating, do we need 128, okay, to add up to 121? Well, this is obviously greater than 121, so we're going to leave this off. Okay, and you can see that we didn't add this number in below since we turned it off. Do we need 64? Okay, and we do need 64. 64 is less than 121, so I've turned this one on, as you can see right here, and 64 has then been put into the bottom section because we're going to add this up amongst, uh, along with these other numbers here too. Do we need 32? Yes, we do. So I've turned this on, 64 plus 32. Right now we're up to 96 which is 64 plus 32. Do we need 16? If I add 16 into this, you know, this is just a math problem. Uh, it's, let's see, 102 plus 10 more is 112. So that's still less than 121. So I'm going to leave this turned on as well. Do I need 8? If I add 8 in here, that ends up being 120 total now. If you're confused by where I'm coming up with this 120, it's just 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8. We're adding these numbers up because we had to turn on each of these different binary numbers above. Okay, 0 is off, 2 is off, because adding 4 or 2 to our number is going to give us greater than the 121 that we're looking to get. And then finally, we turn the 1 on because we need to add in that 1, which gives us our 121. Okay, so if you were to add up these five numbers, they equal 121. We can do the same thing with 48, okay? 128 and 64 are greater than 48, so off, off. We need 32, so we've turned that on, and we need 16. 32 plus 16 equals 48, so there's no reason to use any of these other numbers here, so each of these are off as well, off, off, off. So just 32 plus 16 gives us 48. Now, in an earlier video, we talked about the fact that you can't go any higher than 255 when we're dealing with an IP address. Okay, and the reason for that is because the best we can do is turning on 11111. You can see all the way across, we've turned on all of these different binary numbers. And the best we're going to do here is come up with 255. 128 plus 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. If you do the math, that ends up equaling 255. Okay, let's take a look at an IP address all together then. Here's this one that we talked about first. We've got 192.168.200.77. Okay, and if we were to convert this decimal IP address, as we see here, convert that decimal IP address to binary, here's what the binary equivalent would be. Okay, 110000. 
Okay, and you would get this if we plugged in 192 up here just like we did with these other numbers. 168, 200, and then finally 77. Okay, so that's what ends up uh, taking place anytime you put in a decimal number when you're configuring an IP address. Okay, so thank goodness we can actually just type in 192.168.200.77 and not have to figure out all this binary mess that we see here. Okay, hopefully you have a better understanding of how binary numbers work along with IP addresses. Thank you for watching. This video is brought to you by TrainSignal, Network Admin's number one choice for professional IT training, where you'll find videos on Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, CompTIA, and more. Come visit us today at www.trainsignal.com.